The Rock is behind the new bloodline. The WWE slammed for badly booking the Wyatt Six. Jade Cargill targeted for stealing wrestling moves. John Cena makes an unfortunate announcement. Sami Zayn confirms a serious injury. Omos says it was time for MVP to go. The WWE kept Roman Reigns and Matt Riddle apart due to real life heat. Let's dive right in. The WWE slammed for badly booking the Wyatt Six. The August 5, 2024 episode of Monday Night Raw featured the in-ring debut of the Wyatt Six. After playing mind games for the past few weeks, Dexter Loomis, Joe Gacy, and Eric Rowan battled American Maid, Chad Gable, Julius, and Brutus Creed in a six-man tag team match. In a dominant fashion, Dexter Loomis pinned Chad Gable to pick a win for the faction. While many enjoyed their victory, wrestling legend Jim Cornette has slammed the Triple H-led creative team for the booking decisions related to the faction. This week on Jim Cornette's drive through the veteran termed Wyatt Six in-ring debut an indie-level match. The 62-year-old claimed that Chad Gable was the only guy who looked like a WWE superstar during the match. However, Cornette praised Dexter Loomis, adding that the latter was more memorable. Am I safe in assuming that if this same exact match happened without the three guys being in the Wyatt gimmick, and it's just mass hypnosis, this would have been an indie level match? It looked like Chad Gable was the WWE star doing a third party booking in a rec center with a bunch of guys in the main event just because they sold the most tickets to their family and friends. I don't know, did you think it was that bad? I mean, it wasn't the greatest, but Loomis looks like somebody now. He has long hair, he's kicking that in and he's more memorable, he said. Cornette further claimed that Joe Gacy looked like a pudgy indie guy. And while he acknowledged the Creed brothers as great athletes, the veteran said that Julius and Brutus were greener than a pepper tree. Remember, we said he was Captain Somnambulist before? Well, Loomis looks like somebody. Rowan's big, and Gacy is a pudgy indie guy who kind of wandered into this. If you squinted, it was like spooky hillbillies. Uncle Elmer, Hillbilly Jim, and Cousin Junior. He looked more like Uncle Fester to me. The Creeds are great athletes, but they're greener than a pepper tree, as Frank Spaceman Hickey would say. They're not smooth yet, he added. Former Universal Champion Braun Strowman recently lavished praise on Bo Dallas, Uncle Howdy. During an interaction with Sports Illustrated, the monster among men said it's cool to see Dallas carry forward the legacy of Bray Wyatt. The Raw superstar added that the Wyatt Six would have a successful stint because the group had the right leader in the form of Uncle Howdy. Strowman further claimed that Bo Dallas was as talented as Bray Wyatt, and fans are finally getting a glimpse of Howdy's talent. It will be interesting to see how the Wyatt Six fare in the coming weeks. Jade Cargill targeted for stealing wrestling moves. Jade Cargill has quickly become one of the fastest rising stars in WWE today, and it's not hard to see why. With that said, Cargill has stated that she gets criticized more than other wrestlers for doing the same moves. Cargill has seen a lot of success in WWE so far, as she is a former WWE Women's Tag Team Champion alongside Bianca Belair, although they would lose the title at Clash at the Castle. Jade Cargill began her pro wrestling career back in 2020 and started competing in 2021 in AEW and for her entire career, Cargill has been constantly criticized for her in-ring skills. While speaking to Stephanie Chase, Jade Cargill talked about the pressures she faces in her job. She said that while it might seem like a great position, the constant scrutiny is tough. Even if she performs the same moves as someone else, critics will find small things to criticize. Despite having a wide range of moves, people often think she only has a few. Cargill explained that working with her teammates means she has to adjust her moves based on what others are doing to make sure everything goes smoothly. Cargill feels that the pressure on her is greater than on others, and that it's all part of the job they chose. At the end of the day, it's a job and you know what you sign up for. It is what it is. Anybody would love to be in my position. If anything, I would say there's more pressure on my shoulders than on somebody else's because I've always had a microscope on me regardless of everything. I can literally go out there and do the same thing that someone did in the previous match. And someone will zoom in and criticize saying, nope, her foot wasn't right. I've done all kinds of moves. You can Google my name and see how many moves I've performed. But for some reason, people think I only have two moves. If you look at my repertoire, you'll see I have a solid move set. I choose when to use it, and I have to work in harmony with my coworkers. I can't go out there and do established moves that anyone else is doing or that she's doing. We have to coexist and work together. Cargill also mentioned that she could be spending time with her family, traveling or living her dream on a boat in Italy, but she chooses to continue wrestling because she loves it. Her commitment to the job comes from her passion for wrestling, 
not from being selfish or not understanding the situation. It's more pressure on me than on anyone else. Yes, it's tough, but at the end of the day, it's a job we all sign up for. I believe I have more pressure on my shoulders than anyone else because I'm under a microscope. People think I don't wanna be here, but I am here. I don't have to do this. I could sit at home with my lovely family, travel the world, and live my dream of being off the coast of Italy on a boat. But I choose to be here and break my body because I love what I'm doing. I wouldn't say this is me being selfish or not understanding, but there's a lot of pressure on my shoulders that many people would have folded under a year or two ago. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair failed to win back the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships on Friday Night SmackDown earlier this month after Blair Davenport interfered in the match. Regardless, Cargill is now focused on regaining back the titles, and she couldn't care less about what her detractors have to say. What's your view on what Jade Cargill had to say about getting more criticism than her peers? John Cena makes an unfortunate announcement. John Cena will hang up his wrestling boots next year after having one last run as an in-ring competitor in WWE. The 47-year-old recently provided more details about his retirement plans. The 16-time world champion debuted on the main roster 22 years ago. Earlier this year, Cena appeared at Money in the Bank to announce that he would retire from in-ring competition by the end of next year. Meanwhile, he confirmed his appearance at the upcoming Royal Rumble Elimination Chamber, and WrestleMania Premium Live events. While many wrestlers have previously retired before returning to the ring for one last match or even more, Cena recently killed that hope for his fans as he told the Associated Press that he would never compete again following his retirement. In the interview, the leader of the Senation claimed no check writer could write him a check big enough to change his mind. It's not like, for lack of a better term, it's not a wrestling retirement. I'm not going away for a few years and then coming back. When I'm done in December, I'm done. And there isn't a check writer around who could write a check big enough to change my mind. I've built a great rapport with the WWE fans. Love me or hate me. I think we have a trusting, authentic rapport, and my word isn't, there's no price to break that, he said. Since John Cena announced his retirement plans at Money in the Bank, fans and experts have speculated about his potential opponents on his final run as an in-ring competitor. Former WWE host Matt Camp recently discussed several possible names who could share the ring with the 16-time world champion, including Randy Orton and the undisputed WWE champion Cody Rhodes. On his The Wrestling Matt podcast, Camp also expressed his desire to see the leader of the Senation go head-to-head -head against the world heavyweight champion Gunther. I do want to see a John Cena vs. Gunther match. I think that's a big die-in match. I think that could be a huge match, he said. Although the former The Bump host pointed out that Cena should not face Roman Reigns again after they squared off at SummerSlam three years ago, he claimed they could form an unexpected tag team. It would be interesting to see who the 47-year-old legend would cross paths with on his retirement tour. Sami Zayn confirms a serious injury? On the latest edition of Monday Night Raw, Sami Zayn was in action against Braun Breaker. In the aftermath of the match, the former revealed that he might have suffered a shoulder injury. At SummerSlam, Zayn lost the Intercontinental Championship to Braun Breaker. His fifth and latest title reign began at WrestleMania XL when he defeated Gunther. On Twitter X, Zayn revealed that he might have hurt his shoulder when Breaker threw him into the timekeeper's area during their match on Raw. Oh, I just realized why my shoulder is killing me, wrote Zayn. Omos says it was time for MVP to go. One of the biggest moments of Omos's WWE career came in 2022 when he formed an alliance with MVP. In a recent interview, the 7'3 star reacted to the news that his former on-screen manager is leaving WWE. Reports emerged in July that Bobby Lashley and MVP were set to depart the company. The latter fueled the speculation with a subtle post on social media. He also made an unexpected appearance at GCW Bloodsport, where he confirmed his WWE exit. Speaking to Adrian Hernandez, Omos only had positive things to say about his days working with MVP. He also acknowledged that now is the right time for his friend to explore new opportunities. Since my time on WWE, MVP, I've spent the most time with him on the road, Omos stated. We drove everywhere, three, four hours, you name it. It was him and I, hip to hip, so I'm definitely gonna miss him. I think it was time. I think our time that we spent together, I was able to learn a lot from him. The WWE kept Roman Reigns and Matt Riddle apart due to real life heat. Matt Riddle became a controversial name in WWE because of his problematic actions outside the squared circle, leading to his release. Riddle ruffled many feathers in WWE, and it appears WWE allegedly kept Reigns and Riddle separate due to their real life heat. Before Randy Orton took a break due to injury, he and Matt Riddle formed the tag team team RK Bro. Their partnership was marked by winning tag team championships and becoming notable highlights on WWE television. While speaking on the wrestling mat, 
Former WWE personality Matt Camp revealed how Roman Reigns made an appearance on The Bump back in August 2021 due to his partnership with Shady Rays, a sunglasses company. At that time, they made sure Riddle, who was also a guest on the show, was not on set until after Roman's interview had concluded to avoid any potential issues. Camp noted that they deliberately kept Riddle off the set until Roman's segment was finished, which Camp believed was the right decision. Then he came on again a year later, in August of 2021, because he had a partnership with Shady Rays, a sunglasses company. He did the interview from a house with an outdoor shower somewhere, and he was in full Roman mode. It had been a year. The funny part is that Riddle was the in-studio guest for that show, and we 100% did not put Riddle on the set until Roman was off the video screen. We didn't want to mess with that. Then Riddle went and said something dumb about Roman in another interview right after that. I think that's where he told the story about writing a letter to Roman apologizing, with Randy telling him to do it and all that. We made a point to keep Riddle off the set until the Roman interview was done, which was definitely the right call. Matt Riddle recently admitted that he had angered Roman Reigns after cutting a promo on the bloodline where he stated that he would beat them up inside an MMA cage, but they would eventually mend fences. Regardless, Riddle will always remain a controversial name in WWE, and that's never changing. What's your view on this story concerning Matt Riddle and Roman Reigns? Do you believe Riddle got himself into trouble far too often in WWE? The Rock is behind the new bloodline. On the latest edition of WWE SmackDown, Roman Reigns made it crystal clear that he'll make Solo Sikoa pay for his hostile takeover of the bloodline. However, this journey won't be easy. Following his triumphant return at WWE SummerSlam 2020, Roman Reigns left no stone unturned in making sure that the bloodline emerged as the top faction in the industry. From his record-setting reign as the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, to the Usos dominating the tag division for over a year and a half, the bloodline achieved success that will be nearly impossible for future groups to replicate. But along the way, the head of the table made glaring mistakes too, such as mistreating the ones loyal to him and blindly trusting his enforcer, Solo Sikoa. These issues ultimately led to the collapse of the Roman Empire. Thus, there are a lot of issues that the OTC needs to resolve first, before he can dedicate his focus to avenging Solo's betrayal. Here are six of those. Number one, regaining possession of the Ula Fala. For years, Fans have believed that the undisputed WWE Universal Championship was the thing dearest to the original tribal chief. However, it wasn't until last Friday that fans learned that there's something even more valuable to Reigns. The item in question is the Ula Fala, which Reigns' late father, Sika, honored him with following his son's impactful victory against Jey Uso at Hell in a Cell 2020. Since then, the head of the table made it a habit to wear the prestigious necklace every time he showed up for an important match or segment. In his absence, Solo Sokoa claimed the Ula Fala, and he seemingly has no plans of giving it up anytime soon. During Reigns' altercation with the new bloodline on the August 9th, 2024 edition of WWE SmackDown, the Needle Mover got to hold the tribal necklace in his hands, only for it to be snatched from him right away. Thus, regaining the Ula Fala has to be among the big dog's top priorities if he is to emerge victorious in the battle he has waged against his former enforcer. Number two, avenging the heinous attacks on Paul Heyman and Jimmy Uso. A major part of Roman Reigns' run as the villainous tribal chief revolved around him keeping his family in check. There's no denying that he hasn't been the kindest faction leader to grace the professional wrestling business. Despite that, he fulfilled his promise to bring those who acknowledged him to the island of relevancy. Furthermore, the bond he developed with his wise man, Paul Heyman, should be the blueprint for future wrestler manager associations. Hence, Solo attacking Jimmy Uso and Paul Heyman when Roman Reigns wasn't around was a direct insult to everything that the original Tribal Chief built in the last four years. That said, the nine-time WWE WrestleMania main eventer must not hesitate to express that a driving force behind his comeback was to avenge the attacks done on the people he trusted the most. Number three, acknowledging that the Tongans will never allow Reigns to level the playing field. For years, Roman Reigns has been running roughshod over the many credible WWE names, demanding that they acknowledge him. But now it's time for him to do some acknowledging. On the post-SummerSlam 2024 edition of SmackDown, the 2015 Royal Rumble winner single-handedly took care of the Tongans. But in doing so, he failed to recapture the Ula Fala as Solo Sikoa took advantage of a distracted Reigns and ran away with the prized necklace. Now, it's true that the WWE Tag Team Champions are no match for the Tribal Chief. 
However, they proved that they can be enough of a nuisance to prevent the head of the table from reigning supreme over Solo Sikoa. Add Jacob Fatu and possibly the Tongan's real-life brother Hikuleo to the mix, and the deck is egregiously stacked against the OTC. Therefore, the six-time world champion must realize that he can't win this battle alone and start planning his revenge tour accordingly. Number four, make peace with Jey Uso and Sami Zayn. Speaking of Roman Reigns needing help with countering the insane numbers disadvantage he will soon be presented with, it looks like there isn't a lengthy list of WWE superstars hopping in excitement at the thought of assisting the former big dog, who was their worst nightmare during the last four years. Now, of course, he and Jimmy Uso didn't have any falling out before Reigns went away in April 2024. So convincing Jimmy to join him in the ongoing storyline wouldn't be an uphill task. However, only Reigns and Jimmy won't be enough to weather the storm that Solo Sokoa and his army will rain down on them. The original tribal chief will need more allies, and for that, he would have to master the art of apologizing. That's correct. The only way for the head of the table to get even with Solo Sokoa without having to worry about the Tongans and Jacob is by getting the original band back together. That would be possible if he made amends with Jey Uso and the honorary Yusa, Sami Zayn. Number five, winning back the undisputed WWE Championship from Cody Rhodes. At SummerSlam 2024, Reigns left fans stunned when he helped Cody Rhodes against Solo Sikoa, allowing him to retain the undisputed WWE Championship. Now, it might be true that Reigns was more keen on ensuring that Solo didn't walk out with championship gold around his waist than aiding his two-time WrestleMania opponent. That would indicate that settling the family feud is more critical to him than reclaiming the championship. But given that Reigns had the title for over 1,300 days, it might occur to him that he would be at his best when he's the defending champion. So, it's not out of the realm of possibility for the needle mover to take a brief detour from the Bloodline story and put his mind to regaining the undisputed WWE Championship. After all, with the illustrious gold around his waist, Solo might be more tempted to face his former tribal chief rather than run away from him at the first sign of trouble. Number six, make sure that The Rock isn't the mastermind behind the new bloodline. If the history of professional wrestling is any indication, it's that one can't even fully trust his family. It's true that the WWE WrestleMania XL season was all about The Rock blending in the bloodline and taking it upon himself to ensure that Roman Reigns' reign didn't end at the show of shows. Despite the final boss's efforts, Cody Rhodes ended up finishing the story and put an end to the bloodline's dominance. Since then, the original tribal chief and the final boss haven't been on WWE TV together. Granted that The Rock is currently entangled in his filming commitments, but who's to say that he didn't have enough time on his hands to orchestrate a plan to topple the Roman Empire right after WrestleMania XL? In case the Brahma Bull is in cahoots with Solo Sokoa, the stakes are bound to get tremendously higher. Roman Reigns, of all people, should understand that. So, he should promptly investigate The Rock's potential involvement in the ongoing Bloodline saga. 